Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. It's total spin because they know they can make it a non-issue, and I believe they may finally just completely remove it from water entirely. You know why? Because it's now put in thousands of foods, almost everything that's processed. It's now sprayed on crops and goes through the cell wall and bioaccumulates. We've had the chemist on, uh, and... Uh, We've had the experts on plants on with a, you know, a doctorate in studying a farming, and it is in the toothpaste, so they don't care. They, th they realize it's reached a tipping point. People are suing and rampaging nationwide against their city councils when they laugh. See, now the city council guy laughs at you, the mayor laughs. People don't put their tail between their legs and feel stupid and leave. They get mad and start suing. And the big secret is they're putting hundreds of other chemicals in under the name of fluoride, and if we keep pushing, it's over for them. But you're going to have to get it out of the food next and the toothpaste, okay? Huge victory. Charlotte, I want to get to that victory and get your take on it. Charlotte uh, Iserby, for those that don't know, was the uh, head of policy at the Department of uh, Education under Ronald Reagan. And she discovered that uh, it was an absolute plan to dumb kids down and teach them how to only regurgitate information. S suddenly, I've seen a lot of mainstream articles admitting all of this and how we're you know, last behind the industrialized world now uh, in all of this. But, but she got all the documents out, put it in her book, Deliberate Dumbing Down. The website's deliberatedumbingdown.com. It's now out of print, but she's graciously put an e-free e-version uh, up there on the site. And, uh, of course, she also worked with the U.S. Department of Education before that, worked in the Foreign Service, Japan, Guam, during the Korean War. Her dad and grandfather, of course, were skull and bones. And we really appreciate her joining us. The reason she's almost for the next 20 minutes is she was on about a week and a half ago, and the show ended right as she was getting into how conservatives are controlled. And she brought up the uh, CNP, which I haven't done a lot of research on. People have asked about it, so I've done some. That reportedly the Hunt brothers helped set up and things. And uh, she was saying that that's not a real organization or that that uh, you know, isn't a conservative group trying to take America back or fight the New World Order, as they claim, but actually is the New World Order and her experiences uh, with them. So I wanted to get her up. Charlotte, great having you back with us. Thank you, Alex. And we don't have much time today, so really it's probably just as well because, the, you know, I'm going to try. It'll, it's better when I don't have a lot of time than I just have to do bullets, huh? But... Uh, the basic, uh, you know, this is terrible to have to tell people this, but uh, we are merging right now with the Soviet Union. I know, you know, people don't accept that because they had to have the phony fall of the Soviet Union so that all of you, and well, your, your, your listeners are smart, but so the rest of the world would really think that communism was dead. And uh, communism is not dead at all. It's more alive than it ever was before the, the phony fall. Uh, what we're looking at right now is uh, what uh, Rowan Gaither, the president of the Ford Foundation, <laughs> told the uh, research director for the Congressional Committee investigating the tax exempt foundations, Norman Dodd, in 1954 <laughs> at a close, sort of a closed off the record meeting. And uh, your listeners have heard this before, but you've got to keep listening and, and, and keep telling people this, because although it sounds outlandish and, and off the wall, it's true. He was told by the president of the Ford Foundation that the foundations received their instructions from the White House. Of course, that was 1953 under President Eisenhower, who later, just five years later, you know, during the Cold War, signed the first agreement with the Soviets in every area imaginable. So anyway, but he was told that uh, they got their instructions, the foundations from the White House, uh, to spend their money, which is actually your money, tax exempt, uh, to bring about a merger of the United States and the Soviet Union. And what you have to do is just knock Soviet Union out of your head and, and think in terms of what's going on with uh, the North American Union, which 
they're quieter now. They're hiding away because of the good people. And they're using the fake environmental movement as a way to collectivize and cut off resources Absolutely. as a mode of control. And, right. and, and, and just to back you up, I mean, we can pull this up. Uh, actually, the Carnegie Foundation in multiple congressional hearings, their early minutes, even from the 20s, have been released where they said this was the plan all along. And it turns out U.S. and British intelligence, and, and this has been partially declassified, did put the Bolsheviks into power. So it oh, isn't yeah. just like they're merging. The yeah. whole thing was set up by the banks. But, but, but Charlotte, people really wanted to hear about this CMP okay, thing. Okay, so what, what, you know, they, the CMP, I'm just going to briefly tell you my experience. Uh, when I was in the Department of Education, I got down there. I, I was just bewildered all the time by different things that kept happening. And uh, so I finally get fired because I leaked a document, which was uh, to control the curriculum on the computer throughout the country. And uh, I, I couldn't understand why Ronald Reagan was allowing that to happen. He was, I was beginning to see that Ronald Reagan <laughs> was not at all what I had thought he was. Well, he was known in the 50s. The he was known in the 50s as Red Ronnie. Absolutely. And I personally do not believe he ever changed. And all of that, a lot of that on my website. Well, John Wayne didn't like him in the 40s and 50s and then later liked him because he claimed he was a conservative. But everybody knows John Wayne didn't like communists. But he was, he, he admittedly was in with the communists early oh, on. Oh, yeah. And, well, all you, you have to ask yourself, why, while I was in the Department of Ed, I was, I was a liaison with the White House for really public-private partnerships, which is the merging of the public and private sector. That's the Communist Manifesto, Okay. And where uh, government and business uh, are merged together. So anyway, they were putting that in under Reagan. And I asked at the White House, I said, what on earth are they doing this for? Isn't this corporate fascism? And I was told, oh, I guess that, the, you know, the people involved, all the high-up elitist people on the task force, uh, they just don't see it that way. So I, I was becoming very suspicious. Then, of course, what happens, aside from everything I saw in the Department of Ed, which is all in my book, I don't have to go through all that, people, it's a free, free download, okay? Then when I get out, I write a little book, Back to Basics Reform, for Skinnerian International Curriculum. And that was a brilliant little book. It's only 39 pages, and it's, it is on my Deliberate Dumbing Down website as a free PDF. And All it's right, how they turn the kids into biological robots, not free-thinking creatures. Yes, that's right. So, anyway, we're talking about CMP. All of a sudden, I thought, you know, everybody would want this little book. Well, it was boycotted by every single major conservative organization in the country. And I thought, what on earth is wrong here? Because that's it. Folks, go read that book, and you're going to see a little 39-page book that had it gone all over this country and Canada. We would not now be looking at uh, school-to-work agenda, the Soviet system, uh, quota system for your children, which will control their lives lifelong, what they're going to do. We wouldn't be seeing that. We wouldn't be seeing charter schools, which I'll explain to you, are the vehicle to implement the Soviet system. Now, I played a British government-funded cartoon for kids yesterday where they teach them that cities will be prison and that the government will decide what you're going to be. Well, that's exactly what we're looking at in the charter school movement. And the charter school movement, which is being supported by the school choice charter school movement, being supported heavily by the Heritage Foundation, the Council for National Policy, et cetera, is, is actually the downfall of our country. I talk, we, we've got a, a, like a stool with two or three pegs. Two of the, the, uh, the pegs are, are a free political system whereby we elect officials. The other peg, the most key thing for the economy, is that we have a free economy. The charter schools are going to pull those two pegs right out. No elected officials, which will, which will follow down into other, every area after they've taken over all the schools. And all the schools in this country are almost taken over by charter schools now. There are only 10 states fighting it, okay? Now, the other leg is the planned economy, which requires that school to work. And the school to work needs the, the charter schools, the individual schools, which will train your children, not educate them. Now, folks, you've got to fight charter schools. Well, Charlotte, now, you, you're such a great lady. I mean, every time you come on, you desperately try to warn folks about the takeover, and, and that's important. The show ended last week, though, 
and I was unable to get you on the next day because you were busy. We've got you on this week, and I'll I'll hold you over a little bit. Uh, I'm sure Bob will be fine if we need to, but but I mean I'll I mean I'm always trying to learn more and understand all this. If you go back 13, 14 years ago. I bought this mainline conservative propaganda that let folks have school choice. Well, oh. they should at private schools, but not corporate funded, which is just the internationalization. They're now basically becoming the government, you know, wreck the old schools, federalize them, then offer the solution. Now I understand that. And also, uh, I've interviewed people over the years and a few times heard them mention CMP. Okay, well, Alex, let me talk about this. I'm going to give you a good example. You're down in Texas, okay? Yes. I realize that the CMP is just about as right as it comes. They're funded by Heritage, funded all these, funded by Coors, funded by all these. No, no, you're saying you ran into them. So, I mean, uh, all right, I'm now look, I'm going to tell you how it happened. About 15 years ago, I became very, I, I thought to myself, We've got to stop this, this agenda that's going in here, this merger, this whatever. And the only way we can do it, we have to get out of the U.N. Because no matter how hard we fight on other issues, once we're under the North American Union, which is the same as the European Union, which Gorbachev calls the new European Soviet, once we're under, uh, it won't make any difference if we have an amendment to outlaw abortion or gun controls or whatever. So I dreamed up this little project to have a postcard project, millions of postcards all over the country which have on them legislation to get out of the U.N., who you call, websites, the rotten U.N. that has funded every U.N. war, that, 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 I mean, controlled every U.N. war, or the Soviets are right up there at the U.N. controlling everything. That's why we lose all the war. All the bad stuff about the U.N. Well, what we wanted to do is we'd all ha have thousands of these little postcards, which we would spend with bills, Christmas cards, uh, put up on the bulletin board at the supermarket, uh, put under windshield wipers, get out across the country, people call supporting legislation to get out of this one, uh, this one organization okay. that controls everything. Now, so what we did, we downloaded the names of all the members of the CNP, 300 of them, Samuel, my son did it, who has American Deception. Okay, tell Com. folks who the CNP is. Uh, the Council for National Policy is the right-wing arm of the dialectic. It's the same as the CFR, and in fact, many of the people with the CFR funded it. All right. Well, I mean, so it, but I mean, I, I've always heard the right call the CFR liberal, but I mean, it's full spectrum liberals and conservatives uh, in the CFR. Oh yes, of course, and it's full spectrum liberals and conservatives. So this is like the, the this is the Republican uh, version of that, I guess, to pull in conservatives and then and, and then control and influence them. Is the whole CMP bad? Because this is how I learned about the CMP. I mean, I'd seen little blurbs about it with the Hunt brothers. They sounded pretty good trying to corner the silver market and you know, oh, get, yeah, and then get us out of the new world order. Uh, but then I saw evidence of them involved with the Kennedy stuff and Nixon. So I mean, you know, I, mean, I learned more as the years go on how 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 foggy all of this is. And then I get emails going, "You had Pat Buchanan on. He's CMP. It's almost like a witch hunt." Well, yeah, I have a lot of guests on. I've had a Rothschild on and secured him on air. It doesn't mean that you know I call up his publisher and say I want to have him on about his book, get him on and go after him. Doesn't mean I'm for him. I was against him in the interview. But then there's also a lot of people who've been in the CMP, like a Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, and he's grown. You know, he's learned things. I've talked to him about it. He just says it's basically ineffectual. Oh, that is, that's not true. At okay, all. well then tell. Well, I mean, tell me because because you right, I mean, you know well, him. You didn't let me finish the end of it, Alex. Well, go the ahead. Most important part is Rosalind Haley from Midland, Texas, who Ron Paul knows. And we all know her as a great grand dame. She was a member of the CMP. And uh, I had this project that I wanted to get going, and I talked to Roz, and she said, that's great. We tried to, so we tried to get help. So we sent a, a big yellow a manila envelope full of clippings about Soviet tanks and training and all in the southern United States and exchanges and everything to every member of this Council for National Policy, which is made up of top businessmen and the heads of all of the conservative groups in this country, just about, okay? And we asked for help on this project. We wanted help on this getting out of the U.N. project. We, we got one response. Uh, I'll tell you, I didn't put my name on it because that's real mud. You know, I knew that they wouldn't do anything if they saw Israel So it was Ross Haley, the grand dame, the woman that they admired. She signed it. She sent it out. We got one response from Lou Sheldon at Traditional Values. We did not hear from anyone else. Now, if that doesn't tell your listeners, stay away from every single conservative group you know.
Stay there. We got a break. Come back and break it down for us.